Should a sitting president be above the law? Elizabeth Warren doesn't think so. And along with being one of the first prominent Democrats to call for Donald Trump's impeachment, today she announced changing the laws so that Congress isn't the only body that can hold a president accountable for misconduct. Warren today laying out the steps of her plan in a post on Medium, saying she'd pass a law clarifying Congress's intent that the DOJ can indict a president, amend the obstruction of justice statutes, appoint an attorney general who will protect the rule of law, and do a full reversal on the actual OLC, that's Office of Legal Counsel, I think, opinion that the president cannot be indicted. And here's Warren's final paragraph. She writes this, quote, no matter what he may think, Donald Trump is not a king. Ooh, don't tell him. No president is. And our democracy only works if everyone can be held accountable. These changes will make sure that's the case for generations to come. Donna, I I'm coming straight to you because I think if you ask most Americans, they think that this is so central to who we are. And, and I think people would say, wow, how, how did we fall so far? Well, and I think most people don't even know that you can't right. indict a sitting president. And, you know, Elizabeth Warren has actually been out front, um, you know, from the very beginning, first on impeachment after she read the Mueller report. Mm -hmm. And now she's like leading the pack. And I think the reason for that is because she hears from people and she's just speaking kind of common sense. I mean, you think most people know, well, a president can be impeached and they think, well, they've heard that phrase, high crimes and misdemeanors. But but they don't think that the president can just do no wrong. They know that they can't do no wrong. Right. I think there's something else. I think Elizabeth Warren's judgment isn't clouded. I think Nancy Pelosi is wrapped around six axles and can, she leaves the podium and we all look at each other like, what'd she just say? It's almost indecipherable what the congressional Democrats' message is on impeachment. Elizabeth Warren is speaking with clarity. She sees the moral high ground before anybody else. And every time she sees something else, another egregious example of Donald Trump's obvious corruption and criminal conduct, she's on it. Well, and she says it in very, very plain language. And this is a lesson for all Democrats, is that we actually have to speak more plainly, which is why Robert Mueller's statement was so powerful, because it was simple. It was eight minutes of truth, and the American people heard that, and Elizabeth Warren speaks to that. It would be nice if we could separate this from the presidential politics, but, but you're absolutely right you know on almost all these issues we are incredibly polarized we're incredibly tribal yeah. there is a fundamental consensus in the American people that no person is above the yeah. law and this guideline that the president cannot be indicted is just a guideline it is not based on constitutional law it's actually really thin and I do think that this is one area there ought to be some sort of a bipartisan consensus post Trump yeah that clearly look it, it's ridiculous to say that a president can't be indicted if the president um, I had a podcast the other day where, where the attorney said you know if the president and goes into the private quarters and murders his wife tonight, does anybody honestly think that he would serve out his term, that he would not be uh, criminally charged about that? There's, there, there may be some common sense protections you'd put around yeah. the president, but ultimately, um, I do think it's one of those fundamental principles of American life that, that nobody is above the law, particularly the president. And Elizabeth Warren's post on Medium, Justin Amash's multi-tweet um, thread, and even if people didn't read the tweet, he went out and did a town hall where he spoke with Elizabeth Warren's clarity, I think, whether he was inspired by her or not, I do not know, um, to his constituents. The sad thing is that these are examples so few, we can focus on them a week later. Yes, but also they have the luxury, particularly Elizabeth Warren, she's not trying to wrangle a very complicated you know, she's not playing politics, of, you know, trying to figure out how to wrangle her caucus, which is what Nancy Pelosi is doing, which is why you see her, you know, struggling with that. She's she's able to be very clear and she's but she's been clearer than even some of the other uh, candidates who are, are running for president. But I think your point is the point that there are a lot of people in the country who woke up and were like, oh, I thought no one was above the law. Oh, oh, OK. And and so she's tapping into that and she's also tapping into the base. It's a very it's a very it's a way to kind of 
please the base without making it entirely about Trump. It's broader than that. It's about our country. Um, it's and, not an extremist and when you're, position. No, no, not at all. And, so, and when you're, you have a Congress that can't do anything, which may be the problem with trying to do something <laughs> like this, you know, then it, it becomes even more appealing to people. Yeah. But I mean, Charlie, you and I are old enough to remember when Republicans used to be attracted spiritually and psychically oh. and morally to the idea that a president can't be held I was, above the I law. Was, I was actually thinking <laughs> of that, how everybody's reversed positions from the 1990s. Is you take what everybody believed in the 1990s and you just simply <laughs> reverse it. But there ought to be this moment, maybe post-Trump, we step back and realize, okay, things have gotten out of balance. The president should not be able to unilaterally raise taxes by tens of millions, billions of dollars, right? We should have a Congress. The president should not be immune from the consequences of the law. You know, he that if, if we all committed the same acts the president committed, we would be going to jail. Mm -hmm. um, he is not a king. We are not a royal, we do not have to have a royal system. And I would hope, and J Justin Amash has done a couple of things. I mean, number one, I think he has in, so in some ways kind of shamed the Democrats because he has been clearer and more coherent mm -hmm. in making the case. But he's also sent a message to his fellow Republicans. You know, you can stand up against Donald Trump without committing political suicide. Maybe there is a constituency for this kind of policy, the uh, po you know, politics of principle and decency. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.